And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Viva Java, the coffee game, the dice game, which is a ridiculous name, but Viva Java, the coffee game, came out a year and a half or so ago uh, from Dice Hate Me Games, and I liked it, although I wasn't nearly as in love with it as many others were. I found it a decent, interesting game about getting coffee and researching and such. I'm always interested when something says the dice game because I love rolling dice. So let's take a look and see if this one is like the board game, better than the board game, worse than the board game. Um, I don't, is there any other options? Probably not. Okay, let's just see how it works first. Now with the game come several coasters. In a regular game, you're gonna use a featured blend, a rainbow blend. You have this coaster here that just holds the flavor dice. And then you're gonna choose kind of a technology coaster. This one here is light. On the back here, we have wild, which lets you create your own technology. Um, you'll do that by um, drawing different discs and putting them on that one. There's also uh, a, a, a whole solo coaster for solo play. There's a house one for house play. There's a couple other coasters that come for solo play. I won't be talking about the solo play in this game, but there is an entire solo play option. Now on your turn, what you're going to do is you're going to score. We'll talk about that in a second, but then you will roll dice. So you take five dice and you're going to roll them. Now whatever you roll, that's what you got. Okay, so let's take a look at what I rolled. You can imagine these dice as being six-sided dice. So here I rolled three threes a four and a five, okay? Or three brown, a red, and a green. Now, I have two options that I can do with this. One is to make a blend. Now, to make a rainbow blend, I would need one of every color. Well, that isn't happening. But for a featured blend, all I need is at least two of a kind. So I could do this and say, this is my featured blend. When I make a featured blend, I'm going to get a point. And if, I, if it's still there at the beginning of my next turn, I'm going to get three points. Well, hooray for that. Now, someone else might roll a better featured blend. Here, they've rolled two yellow, a black, a green, and a red. This is not better. This is only two of a kind. But let's say they had rolled three yellow. Still not better, because three brown is better than three yellow. Let's say they rolled three brown. It's not better, because you don't count the extra dice. This isn't like poker, so I need to roll something better. But if I rolled four yellow, then you're out and I would place my dice here, take the point. So when you put out a blend for feature blend, you wanna put out one that's good enough to score you, that still be there, so to score points at the beginning of your next turn. The rainbow blend is done the exact same way. If you roll a different color on each of your dice, then you get the rainbow blend, right? So there's a rainbow blend, but if someone else rolls a rainbow blend, they knock you out. So it can be pretty easy to be knocked out. At the beginning of your turn, you'll get two points if it's still there. Now, when your turn comes around, let's say I'm this guy with four yellow and a red, and I score my three points, then I'm allowed to leave it there and try and score another three points. If that happens, though, I have to degrade it, so I take one die off. If it's still my turn next turn, I get another three points, and no one's beaten it yet, then I would degrade it again and skip my whole turn. Of course, now it's gonna be easier to beat, and then it will be really easy to beat, and then the last time, you have to get rid of it because you're never allowed to have just one die. But what if I don't beat the feature blend or don't roll a rainbow blend, and that's gonna happen often? Then each person in front of them has a little sheet called research. So let's say that, I, let's do a quick roll here, and this is what I've rolled here. Well, that's probably not good enough for a featured blend, but I have two yellows, a white, a black, or a red. And what I can do here is mark off points with a pencil or pen and take research. When you take research, you're going to get a technology. Here, if I get two marks in yellow, I can use the yellow technology once. Once I get the three, four, five, I can use the technology twice. When I get all the way across, I'm going to get points for that technology, but I can no longer use it any longer. There's five different technology. Black does not have an associate technology, but black allows you to get flavor beans instead of doing a technology, which you'll roll with your next uh, bean, and they have a wild side on them, which can help you make a great featured flavor. Now, what are the technologies? Well, this is what's really cool about the game is they're different for each game. 
White technology, for example, lets you re-roll the dice once or twice. A lot easier to make a feature blend when you can do that. This green one here, extra flavor, gives me an extra flavor dice to use. This one here, I can block an action that someone else has. The discs have it. Uh, once or twice per game, I can block an action and say no one's re-rolling until the beginning of my next turn. Over here, improve a bean. I can change a three to a four or a four to a five. And there is all sorts of different technologies. These are the five that come here on the light one. But like I said, if you use the wild one, you always have a re-roll. But there might be something else, like there might be this one here, a flip bean, which lets you flip one of your dice to the other side of that dice. So you can flip change a three to a four or a one to a six. And there, I'm telling you folks, there is a whole ton. So every game is going to be different. There's a card that explains how each of the technologies work. And, so, and there's also different types of technology. So when you set, start the game up, this one here shows a die, so this one would go here, and then you would take one star here. Uh, this gives you extra research points. Uh, here's a special one, a reboot, and another special one, morning favorite. And each of those has very specific things they can do. Now on your research pad, you're going to keep track of your research, but you're also keeping track of your points. Remember, you get a point whenever you take a flavor, make a flavor, whether it's rainbow or feature blend. If you still control rainbow at the beginning of your turn, you get two. If you still control feature blend at the beginning of your turn, you get three. When you finish a technology, you will get points equal to the number on that technology. You can see here that the, the flip bean is a three and the reroll is a three and the extra research point here is a two. And the first person to get the 21 points which again, you're marking them off at the top here. Let me show you an example uh, score sheet here. You mark them off. First person to get to 21 is the winner of the game. Fantastic. Automatic on the shelf here. Well, when I find a spot for it, but I will find a spot for it because this game is great. Essentially, this game is Yahtzee with technology. I. That's such a good combo. I really like the fact that you start off and, hey, where's my free rerolls? You don't get any. You gotta earn them. What? Okay, great, that's a technology I'll take, but what about the technology that lets you just change a few dice, or flip a die, or maybe this technology which gets you get more technology. Um, meanwhile, so you're like sitting there, okay, I'll get technology. Someone else is like, oh, I'll just take the feature blend in and score points and get ahead of everybody else. And there's a lot of interaction. You're trying to roll better than the other people. And sure, there's gonna be that whole that was an amazing roll. You did well, sir. We bow before you because you're going to win the game now. <laughs> Maybe not win the game, but you can really roll well sometimes. But I like it. I like getting the extra flavor dice to use them and roll them. There's even a rule in the game where you can roll flavor dice on someone else's turn so that they can make a better feature blend and then you give them a disc because that's partially your coffee. Come on, I helped out. And you can leech some points, get some points by helping them. The game is not difficult to teach. Uh, it's easy to play. The different, I love the fact, I mean, this by far my favorite part of the game, is the fact that that technology disc that you put out in the middle, you can, it's gonna be different every game. Every game you're gonna play with different grouping of technology. So everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Um, the re-roll's almost always there because you need re-rolls. But, and then also the game has a slight bell curve. As you start getting more technologies, you're like, that's right, bring it! Bring it on, I can roll dice. But at a certain point, you're like, I want these points from this technology. Four points is nothing to scoff at. But once you take it, you can no longer use it again. <laughs> what a great game. Does it make me think of coffee? Well, not at all, actually. Um, there's some cool stuff in the game. I mean, there's a, a bag for the tiles. Isn't that very thematic? And then, of course, there's if the game is really terrible and you don't like it, you got some custom coasters for your coffee mugs and such. That would be an expensive way to do that, but it ha that has that good thematic flair to it, but it's all about rolling a dice. And like I said, it's Yahtzee with special powers or Yahtzee with technology. And that to me makes the game. Not a very long game. On the side of the box, it says 30 to 45 minutes. Once you know what you're doing, easy 30, maybe even 20 minutes. Not, not bad, good quality production, dice look good. And get this, here's your first player marker. I love this. I was like, why is it rubber? No, it's an eraser too. Ha, ha, ha. Although, I mean, I guess if you use it a lot, you no longer have a first person marker, but I had to steal one from another game. But wow, that, I don't know. I like this very great game. I highly recommend it. Viva Java, the coffee game, the dice game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.
The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.